Now, it, it's, it's a funny scenario because Kodo, whether he will or will not, he does have the tools to beat a Canelo or a Golovkin. But something has happened over the last two years, especially after Kodo won that um, WBC title from Sergio Martinez literally a year ago. Something has happened where maybe it's just him selling himself or maybe he's just feeling himself too much, but now he's adopted the moniker, not by choice, of being called Diva Kodo. And his championship, the WBC championship, is a Divas belt. He won it via catchweight, okay, catchweight 159. And now with Daniel Gill, he's fighting Daniel Gill at a catchweight of 157 pounds. But guess what? Gary Shaw Productions, the promoter of, um, of uh, Daniel Gill yesterday, stated that there's no financial penalty if Daniel Gill does not make weight. So therefore, the fight will still go on. Yes, they can cancel it, but they're not going to cancel it. It can still go on, but the worst thing, the worst thing will happen to Daniel Gill is that he will not be able to win the WBC title. Now, in this situation, if Daniel Gill was to get a win over Miguel Cotto without that WBC title, then that's like a championship of his own. I am T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live with RealCombatMedia.com, and I cover every single major fight live. So... This weekend on HBO, you're going to have Daniel Gill fighting Miguel Cotto for the WBC 160-pound title and the Ring Magazine 160-pound title. People are wondering, well, why is Cotto fighting Daniel Gill? I'm looking at it like, well, maybe he's using Daniel Gill as a stepping stone or, or not a stepping stone, but a measuring stick to see how he'll do against Golovkin. And also, we're going to see him fight a good, solid 160 pounder. Now a lot of you Americans, you don't know who Daniel Gill is. You may act like you know who Daniel Gill is. But Daniel Gill is a pretty big name outside of the United States. So, does Daniel Gill have a chance? Yes, he does have a chance. He's going to have to do a lot of movement. And also, I'm actually going to say this. We don't know what Miguel Cotto power looked like at 160 pounds. It was somewhat questionable to me at 154. When he beat Sergio Martinez, Sergio Martinez was on disability. So now, I have to think, well, Daniel Gale is known to be somewhat of a light puncher at 160 pounds. But will he be a light puncher against Miguel Cotto? He has the height, he has the reach advantage, and he's a natural 160 pounder. Now, they already said that Daniel Gale is going to come into the ring big. Daniel Gale has been sparring with Toriano Johnson. They are really, really, really trying to in this whatever Miguel Cotto was doing with that 160 pound title but if a lot of you don't know it's set up to where as in if Miguel Cotto wins in order for him to fulfill his obligation to HBO he has to fight Canelo but if he has to fight Canelo but if he does choose to fight Canelo he has to pay GGG step aside money but also set it up so that he fights GGG next. So basically, long story short, if Kodo wins, they put him in a situation to answer. He's got two mandatories. Go look it up. So, you know, he has no choice but to fight Canelo or to fight Golovkin. And then if he don't, he's going to drop his belt. So as far as HBO is concerned, he's got to fight Canelo next if he, if he beats Gil. As far as WBC is concerned, you can fight Canelo, but give Golovkin some bread, and then you fight him after Canelo. Or the winner of that fights Canelo. So, you know, I'm actually glad they put him in that situation, because now we're going to see what he's really about, especially with that Rock Nation deal. I want to see, really, can Cotto put his money where his fucking pit and goddamn Crocs is? I am Tissue Controversy. This is Tissue Controversy Live of RealCombatMedia.com, and I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.